I'm Eric Ponce from Firestone Walker Brewing Company in Paso Robles, California. We're here with Craft Beer and Brewing's Tip of the Week. So now it's time to empty some barrels. We have our timelines where things need to get packaged, so I always work my way back. Our example will be Parabola. Parabola needs to be packaged by this date. I start sampling every single Parabola barrel. Half those samples go to the lab to get micro and analytical, make sure the barrels are clean. And then I'm also told the ABV of each individual barrel and then the sensory aspect of it. 99.9% .9 of the time, every single barrel that I sample for Parabola is gonna make that blend just because the base beer, it's the same beer going into the same allotment of spirit barrels from the same distillery. So we kind of know what the flavor aspect is gonna be. And this is a straight Parabola. We obviously do variants and do things where the Parabola ages for two years in barrel with some specialty barrels as well. When I have my timeline of when I need to empty barrels, I make sure I go meet with our lab technicians and they tell me every result that we got for the micro. If barrel number 4625 comes back micro positive with the beer spoiling bacteria, then I'd make sure I mark that, find that barrel, put that one to the side and we don't push that. That rarely happens, but it's nice to have that knowledge to know that every single barrel is clean and every single barrel that I wanna push and that I sample can get pushed. Second thing I do is get all the analytical numbers from every individual barrel then I'm able to get my ABV. We need to put the ABV on every single label. So I can go back and know that I sampled 250 bourbon barrels of Parabola. I got the ABV from every single barrel, do the calculation, get the average ABV, and that's what we're gonna put on our label. Now I know that I'm good micro and analytical wise. Now it's time to start taking that liquid out of barrel. So we forklift all the Parabola barrels that were sampled out of this room that you see today into our barrel process floor. We have our racking wand set up. We have our line set up. We have all that, that entire pathway sanitized and ready to go from the racking wands that are gonna go into the barrel all the way to the end of the stainless steel tank that it's gonna be pushed into. Do an exterior clean of every single barrel. Get that bung off, stick that racking wand in there. Add that racking wand is purging with CO2. So as it's going in, it's purging out CO2. We put it in there and then we push out that liquid with CO2. It takes us about a minute to two minutes to push each individual barrel. We usually have two racking wands going at a time and we can empty roughly 100 to 150 barrels actual individual spirit barrels in one shift it's non-stop and we are controlling and we are monitoring the do levels the dissolved oxygen levels of the actual beer as it's coming out of the barrel so we're kind of monitoring that and kind of seeing the levels of how much oxygen was picked up within that beer as it was matured in that barrel because i do keep track of the beer's do before it goes in barrel and then we monitor it as it's coming out and see if there's any red flags. Once you fill a barrel, you don't want to, you don't want to keep moving it. Another reason you don't want to keep sampling it. You get a lot of slushing around. It could allow some oxygen to go in there. So one year we had to move every single barrel from one facility to the other. And I knew that my DOs were going to be slightly higher just because I had to drive these barrels to rough ground and the beer slushing around. And the DO coming out of those barrel was approaching a 100, which isn't where we want to be. Still under 100, but it was still, it was the highest I've seen. Our normal protocol, where we fill it, set it, sample it once or twice, and then take it to empty it. The DOs coming out of barrel oh, can range from, I mean, as low as 10 up to around 50 to 60. So we're monitoring the DO. Then once everything's in the tank, then again, we get a final DO reading out of the, the stainless steel tank. We get another sample for the lab to get another micro reading and another analytical and just make sure everything's in spec for analytical labeling reasons. And we also wanna make sure that everything stayed clean from point A to point B. So we do another micro PCR traditional plate testing of that beer. And then taste the final blend. That's always the best part, knowing that that beer was at least one to two to three years in the making. So it's, that's always one of my favorite parts is to taste the blend once everything's finally pushed in the tank. Then we get a glass, we taste, we smell, 
do a little dance and celebrate. So once we push all of the liquid from wood to stainless steel, get our, another analytical reading, get another micro reading, then it's time to transfer that beer into bright tank. And that's where we're actually gonna start carbonating the beer. Most of our vintage beers are carbonated to about 255 to 26 volumes. There are some cocktail inspired beers. I did a gin ricky. I did a beer that was aged in gin barrels and the cocktail itself uses carbonated water. So that one, I actually wanted a lot more effervescence. I wanted a lot more bubbles. So that one was carved to about 275. But traditionally with our stouts and our porters and our barley wines, we just like the mouthfeel, the creaminess, the texture that we get at 255 volumes. To learn more about brewing spirit barrel aged beers, click the link below.